downward sloping in the vicinity of the earth. And that's, that emerges due to the assumption that all of this activity, this boiling and roiling of the unified field, is random, is arbitrary, chaotic. But if you could introduce some purposefulness to it, some orderliness, if it were possible to sustain a desire, to hold an impulse at that deepest, deepest level of thought, the deepest level of consciousness, you can easily upset the averaging process and that what will emerge as macroscopic space may be curved up, in which case we would... Curved up. So macroscopic space will be curved up. So then we would be falling... Okay, curved up. What would that look like on our horizon? Like he's saying. Curved up. Is that when those days... Okay, because one has introduced a field. Fall up and not down. And it's like that with all these abilities. If you, if you take the possibility of entertaining a thought, not on the chaotic, noisy, active thinking level, but at the deepest, deepest impulse of mind, as a desire just emerges from the ocean of consciousness, there you will see that a mustard seed of faith can move mountains. That's where the power of thought is. And there's dramatic proof of this that led to the Nobel Prize a couple of years ago. And that is that, yes, you can control gravity. Whoa. To the Nobel Prize a couple of years ago. And that is as a desire just emerges from the ocean of consciousness, there you will see that a mustard seed of faith can move mountains. That's where the power of thought is. And there's dramatic proof of this that led to the Nobel Prize a couple of years ago, and that is that, yes, you can control gravity at that level. <laughs> so you may be aware, some of you, of dark energy, which is propelling the universe into a state of expansion today, accelerating expansion. What is fueling that gravitational repulsion of space, or what's called anti-gravity, is this activity. Purely this. And if you can dial up the energy of the vibrational structure of consciousness at its source, you can increase the so-called cosmological constant or the anti-gravity <laughs> impulse and overwhelm the attractive effect of matter. <laughs> so this is something we know works. It's working right now in our universe. So putting that together and cutting it short... And perhaps does my weird experiments that I haven't been able to share show this? Based on incredible quantitative correspondence, based on experimentally known long-range field effects of consciousness, based on certain classic cities when demonstrated, based on what we know and what we think we know, Atman is Brahman, is the most parsimonious explanation. Pure consciousness in the unified field. And that's a big deal. Mm. It's a very big deal to say that yourself, your subjectivity, your inner being, is the intelligence that created the universe. If that were somehow practically relevant, it would be amazing. Mm. Generally, it's not so practically relevant because in waking consciousness, we are utterly unaware of the self. It's there or we wouldn't be awake. But we don't see that. We see the objects, the thoughts, the feelings. The meditative state, which is again radically different from anything in waking, dreaming, or sleeping, is the opposite. We sacrifice everything. We transcend all mental activity, all feeling, all belief, and just plunge into universal consciousness. It's a fleeting thing. You wouldn't want to live there. You might be tempted to live there. It's immensely blissful, but you'd starve <laughs> eventually. Because that state of consciousness is 
transcendental alone. Hmm. That's this fourth state of consciousness I mentioned before. But that's not the end, of course. That's not why one would undergo a path of meditation, path of regular transcending. The idea is, by alternating the brain activity from active focus to non-focused, inactive, unbounded, specific to non-specific, well. the brain gets sufficiently flexible that that inner silence and unbounded awareness and maximum orderliness of brain functioning becomes permanent during cry. dynamic activity, during sleep, during dreaming, during anesthesia. Once the light of life has really turned on, you can never extinguish it. And that's called liberation or enlightenment because although one experiences the upheavals of day-to-day -day activity, one is anchored in something that is beyond and so huge, bigger than the universe, that the ups and downs of life simply do not overshadow at all the continuum of bliss. The whole rise and fall of civilization in that state of consciousness is just an eye blink. That was great. That that inner silence and unbounded awareness and maximum orderliness of brain functioning becomes permanent during dynamic activity, during sleep, during dreaming, during anesthesia. Once the light of life has really turned on, you can never extinguish it. And that's called liberation or enlightenment because although one experiences the upheavals of day-to-day -day activity, one is anchored in something that is beyond and so huge, bigger than the universe, that the ups and downs of life simply do not overshadow at all the continuum of bliss. The whole rise and fall of civilization in that state of consciousness is just an eye blink. Hmm. I wanted to end with a slide that life doesn't stop at liberation, nor does it stop at 40. What was the other slide? Shadow at all the continuum of bliss. The whole rise and fall of civilization in that state of consciousness is just an eye blink. I wanted to end with a slide that in something that is beyond. He is in his own being pure, never changing, never unpollutable, and in peace beyond desires, conscious of God. Huh. Yeah. Establish in the self. I wanted to end with a slide that life doesn't stop at liberation, nor does it stop at 40 years old. It keeps on going, fortunately. And what happens over time, I don't think there's a technique for this, but over time, living the state of unbounded inner awareness. Unbounded inner awareness. During dreaming, during anesthesia, once the light of life has really turned on, you can never extinguish it. And that's called liberation or enlightenment because although one experiences the upheavals of day-to-day -day activity, one is anchored in something that is beyond and so huge, bigger than the universe, that the ups and downs of life simply do not overshadow at all the continuum of bliss. The whole rise and fall of civilization in that state of consciousness is just an eye blink. I wanted to end with a slide that life doesn't stop at liberation, nor does it stop at 40 years old. It keeps on going, fortunately. And what happens over time, 
I don't think there's a technique for this, but over time, living the state of unbounded inner awareness. Living the state. That's what it was. <clears throat> With the state of outer dynamism. And With the state of outer awareness, isn't it? Activity, one is anchored in something that is beyond and so huge, bigger than the universe. That the ups and downs of life simply do not.